So we're just back from the uh, 2019 NTA, the National Trappers Association Convention. We had it in Springfield, Missouri, which is uh, pretty close to, to where I am. So it was, it was really neat to be able to go down there and, uh, and see an NTA. Uh, it's, a, it's a big, you know, it, it's a big convention. Uh, lots and lots of people. I was amazed. Um, I was amazed at the walking through the parking lot um, man, I'm guessing maybe 20-25% of the license plates were Missouri license plates. Everybody else was from all over the place. I mean, I saw Pennsylvania, West Virginia, South Carolina, Oklahoma, Illinois, um, gosh, Arkansas, Iowa, uh, Texas. I mean, all, all over the place. I, I was. I thought that was really cool that um, we were able to draw so many folks from from so far away to come to to that NTA, and uh, and I think I think we did a good job. I'm, I'm proud of the Missouri Trappers Association. Uh, I saw a couple of posts by some of the vendors who said thank you very much. I was there helping um, set, helping them set up on Wednesday, uh, and then got to go back down uh, on Saturday to kind of kind of buy some stuff. Took the family. Had, had a really really good time uh, it was a big show anything you can think of uh, and they also had some really cool stuff for uh, kids and they had some cool stuff for the ladies they had um, I don't even know candle making supplies and uh, a bunch of different soaps and, and, and all kinds of stuff so everybody had a good time and it was it was really a good good show <coughs> um, so if you have a an NTA or an FTA that's coming close to your area. I encourage you to go to it. Um, you know, I got to meet all the big names: Jeff Dunlap and Clint Locklear and the Hoosier Trapper guys, and uh, uh, Chip Davis with Expanded Pan, Lisa Rusat, who I got to meet and work with at the LKL Trapping Experience. But you can meet all those guys. You can meet the bait makers. You can talk to them personally. Um, tell them what you're seeing on your line tell them what's going on and they can really help you because they know you know what all the bait and lure that they make <clears throat> they know where it shines they know where uh, you know what I mean it can really help you out in certain situations so it's very beneficial to, to be able to actually talk with the, those guys and um, and go over what's going on, on your line and they can really help you I think um, <clears throat> to, to make some progress so um, I got kind of two little piles here, and uh, this pile over here is kind of the the tried and true. This this is the stuff that I have uh, had success with, and, and this is you know I, I went ahead and, and, and bought some uh, some more of this stuff uh, for for this coming up season. So uh, Cat Collector this is the, the first one here. Um, Clint Locklear, Predator Control Group. I've had really good success with Cat Collector. I've caught cats and coyotes on it. Uh, it's got a pretty unique smell, but uh, it doesn't take a lot of this stuff, and it, it really does pull. Uh, it really does pull stuff to a set because it's uh, it's been very effective. So that's a good one, Cat Collector. Um, I didn't get this one at NTA because I don't think Ozark Mountain was there. Uh, but he's typically at the MTA, the uh, Missouri Trappers Association Rendezvous, and he's on Facebook, so if you're interested in Ozark Mountain Lures, um, he makes some, some good stuff. This one's called Cat Fight. It's a bobcat gland lure. It, it's worked really well for me as well. Um, Lisa Rusat's Extreme Performance Bobcat Gland. That's another one uh, that I've had good success with. Rusat makes some good stuff. Um, this has probably been my most successful bait, and it's top dog predator bait from uh, from <clears throat> Hoosier Trapper Supply. Uh, real mild smelling stuff, but man, it, it works. It's definitely been the, the best performing bait that I have used so far. So I got two, and I got I got more. I'm just kind of brought some down to show. Um, this is Milligan's Catman Two. Uh, this has been a good producer for me too. It's got a little bit of a skunky smell it's a little bit louder than some of the lures that I typically use but uh, but it has it has done very well for me and then uh, Hoosier Trapper Supply Coyote Gland Lure the 
stuff is worked well. Um, so, you know, this is all from from pretty well known um, guys, maybe except for Ozark Mountain. I mean, he's well known here in Missouri, but maybe not nationwide. But you know, Milligan's is, is sold at F and T and just about everywhere. Rusat, same thing. Um, you know, of course, Clint Locklear and Predator Control Group. You know, all, all the places have them. And then Top Dog's getting more and more. They have it at F and T now. You can go straight to them and get it. Uh, but they do carry the Top Dog, I think, at F and T now. So. You know, all these all these things are pretty well known. Um, these are some newer things for me. Now, I mean, this is Dunlap, so obviously he's very well known as well. Very nice guy too. I got to meet Jeff, and, and he he kind of walked me through how to use this uh, Ladybug Matrix lure. So it's it was good to be there, like I said, and, and be able to talk to him. But um, this is from Dunlap Lady Luck Matrix. Um, you know, the Matrix has, uh, according to Jeff. Uh, lovage in it which is uh, like a mating uh, type of a smell so uh, as you get uh, deeper into the trapping season you know late December and on into January that's when this one really starts to shine it can be used all year but this is um, you know kind of made to um, to call them in when they're really looking for uh, for a mate so that's that's uh, I'm gonna try that one this year lady luck done lap <clears throat> um, you know again a well-known guy it's just not something that I had used before another well-known guy is, is John Graham with Fur Country Lures this is called Tomcat um, I just had a lot of guys say you know if you're looking for something for Bobcats uh, and you haven't tried uh, John Graham's Tomcat it's 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 time to try it it's really good stuff so it has a very unique odor to it as well so I'm, I'm looking forward to trying this one I think it's going to be a good one <clears throat> couple of and now this is um, maybe a little less well known here this is a, a guy out of Kansas called Kansas Trapping Products and uh, he's got a YouTube uh, channel and, and does a bunch of videos and things um, some pretty impressive catch numbers I mean I, I think it's uh, it's going to be good stuff as well this one's called Last Dance Kansas Trap Line Products uh, Last Dance it's a, it's a lure uh, pretty mild smelling <clears throat> So we'll, we'll see. I think it's going to be a good one. And then he's got a couple of these. So this is um, Kansas Trapline Products Die Hard B Pace Bait. And there's a couple of uh, the Die Hard in his line. He's got a, I know he's got a Die Hard C. Uh, maybe there might be another one too. But the Die Hard B, B's for beaver. So this is a beaver base. It's the same, um, same mixture of, uh, of oils and, and other scents. So he just kind of changes up the base meat. So I went with B, which is beaver. He's got C, which is chicken. Uh, I'm not sure what the other one is, but I think there is another one as well. Um, but anyway, uh, this one's a little bit louder, uh, a little bit more um, tainted, I guess, probably than like the top dog or some of the other baits that I typically use. I typically use a pretty, um, a pretty mild bait, nothing that's super loud. And it's just my experience. I mean, I know uh, I'm sure other people have had had, had good luck with, with the louder baits. In my experience, in my area, we've got a ton of possums. We've got a ton of raccoons. And in my experience, whenever I use the louder smelling baits and lures, I tend to end up with a lot of non-targets. So that's why I, I usually kind of, you know, am, am sticking with the more milder smells and not the super loud, super rotten stuff. But again if you use that stuff and it works for you great it just hasn't worked very well for me and maybe I'm not using it right I don't know but anyway Kansas trap line products uh, die hard B so this one we're, we're gonna we're gonna see it's, it's a little bit louder than I'm what I would usually go with so we'll see and then the, here's another one that's that's a little bit louder it's called uh, Flint Hills red fox paste bait and it's by Kansas trap line products as well and this one is a little bit louder so you know, I kind of went and got uh, the standbys, the stuff that I know is going to work well for me. And, uh, and, you know, every year, whether it's at uh, the Missouri Trappers Rendezvous or, you know, NTA, I got lucky enough for NTA to be close this year, so I got to go there um, and kind of branch out a little bit into some stuff that maybe I, I wouldn't normally have access to. At least, you know, I mean, you can have it all shipped to you, but to pick it up and not have to pay shipping, it's, it's rare that I would have access to this stuff. So... Um, 
we're going to see. This is, you know, again, kind of the, I try to go in there and pick something, a few things. I try not to go crazy. I usually do go crazy, but I try not to go crazy. Um, but I try to pick up, you know, some things that maybe, um, maybe are a little bit outside the box, maybe a little bit outside of my comfort zone, a little louder than I would normally use, and we're going to check them out and see if maybe um, it has a positive effect. Because you never know. You know, things can change from season to season. Things can change from, from um, you know, property to property. Um, so I wanted to, to change things up, get some stuff that's maybe a little bit louder, uh, a little bit different than what I'm normally using, and we'll see. So that's it from the NTA. I'll throw a little video. Um, it was a really good show really well attended. I talked to uh, a lot of the, uh, the vendors and they said that uh, Thursday was amazing, like slam packed. Uh, I know Friday was, was very good. Uh, I think Saturday was a little bit slow. Um, first thing in the morning I think it picked up and then it slowed down pretty quick afternoon. And uh, a lot of the guys, I was there, I think I left around 2.30, 2.33. On, uh, on Saturday and I think some of the vendors were already packing up to go because it had, it had kind of slowed down at that point but um, but anyway it was a good show I hope the numbers are good uh, talked to a lot of the guys there and they said you know this is kind of a test for NTA this is I, I don't know this for a fact but this is what I was told that, that Springfield Missouri is about as far south as the NTA has ever been held um, so I hope the numbers were good because if the numbers weren't good you know, it's going to be hard for the NTA to justify bringing it that far south again. So uh, I hope the numbers were good. I hope that, uh, you know, the Midwest and the, the Mid-South kind of prove that we can bring numbers to the NTA and we can make it a good show for everybody. So I hope the NTA will continue to bring it uh, to our area and make it easier for us to get to. You know, because in Escanaba, Michigan, that's a, that's a haul for me. It's probably not something I'm going to go to. But Springfield, Missouri, even Iowa, you know, Illinois, uh, Kansas, you know, those are places that, that I would I would travel to for NTA. So anyway, that's kind of my uh, kind of my breakdown on NTA. And uh, like I said, I'll put in a little video, kind of give you an idea of the booth setup and the uh, and the traffic that was there on on Saturday afternoon. So thanks. Yeah.